Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and in my channel I talk about plants uh, and things I feel passionate about, uh, which a lot of times is just kind of my experiences with plants and my life journey with them. Uh, today's video is actually a requested video by one of you guys. Hi Penny, thank you so much for watching and being there. I appreciate your comments so much and and your presence on my Instagram, it really makes a difference for me. And uh, I really appreciate you giving me this video idea, telling me that you would like to know more about this. So, so here I am. Uh, so Penny asked me to do a comparison. She, she wants to know the difference between certain Hoyas. And I have a few in my collection that are that look a little bit similar. So I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of what they look like and uh, the differences that I notice in, in them. So the first one she actually um, asked for to, to show uh, side by side is the uh, Calistophila and Finlaysonii. So as you guys know there are I think quite a few different varieties of Finlaysonii and I have maybe three of them but the one that looks the most similar to Calistophila is the one that I will be doing a side by side for you guys today. So I have them both here. Let me see, I find a leaf that's on this guy. Okay, so maybe I'll just show you the first one. This is the Finlaysonii. Eye. And um, this is the Calistophila. So, and having them next to each other, side by side, they are very, very similar, but there is difference as well. So, the, if, I don't know if you could tell from the image, the Phenisonia's leaves is succulent, but not as thick as the Calistophila. And, and this one in particular, the Venetian, is a little bit even more, um, there's more finer veins in in the Finlaysonia than the Calistophila. So this one has thicker kind of more bold stamen venations. And these one, the, the Calistophila, this one is bold too, but a little bit more like finer, I would say. Penny, I hope that this kind of shows you the difference between the two. If not, we'll private message each other and then I'll, we can go through them a little bit more. And the second one that you asked about is the difference between, I think, the Australis Australia Lisa and the Crimson Princess. So I'm gonna just take this opportunity to also show the difference between the Crimson Princess and the Quim Quim Crimson Queen. Um, okay. A lot of people know it by, so the Queen, has the crown, they wear the crown on the edge, so the, the white of the queen is on the outside and it, has, it can put out these kind of completely white and pink leaves that the princess doesn't, doesn't do. Um, and I'll show you the princess. So the princess is very different. The green, the green is on the outside and the variegation is in the center of the of the leaves. So these leaves, they come out really kind of pink, sometimes bright red, or like deep kind of ruby red. And then they slightly turn pink, and then they slightly uh, turn into this kind of creamy, beautiful color. And uh, and the leaf, uh, the, the leaves on the princess is actually a lot uh, thicker than the queen. So this is the side by side of the two of them. Um, in my opinion, the queen, because it has more green, so it's less playful, it's more graceful, and the princess is like splashy, uh, more playful, um, yeah, and flirtier. They're both really, really gorgeous, beautiful plants. So, um, and Penny asked to see the difference between the princess and the Australis Lisa. They have very similar color uh, scheme. So this is the Australis Lisa. But as you can see, the leaf shapes are very, very different. The princess is um, got that pointy leaf, very like the carnosa look. And the Australis Lisa, you've got that beautiful Australis 
oval shape. Um, yeah, and their growth, their growth pattern is quite different too, I, I think. And the leaves are, the leaf again, the princess is really quite succulent, quite thick leaves. And the um, Ashellus Lisa, not as thick, not as succulent. Yeah. So this is a close up for the Ashellus Lisa. And this one also grows out in a dark ruby red and then fades and fades into like a beautiful pink and then into this kind of more creamier color. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I, so since I have the queen here, I also want to show you, um, and on the market, there's not just this kind. There's a different kind that is um, more oval uh, in size. Some people, but it's also got that signature uh, elbow marginata kind of white rim on the outside look look at this one I got a, it's like a half white half green so I uh, hear some people say this is like a snowball maybe they have different parents maybe one same mom and a different dad but uh, this one is also called the crimson queen as well I think uh, okay and since also I just recently got a new Hoya Suzy Q and they look very similar between the, the um, Hoya Crimson Queen and Suzy Q so I can now also do a side by side for you guys to see the difference between the two Hoyas. Suzy Q also has um, wide rim but you know what the texture and this, the way Suzy Q is succulent is very very similar to uh, the, the princess but it's just even I think even more succulent it's basically it, it's basically like a crinkle eight but with the uh, uh, princess no the Hoya crimson queen look check, check out these uh, new leaves they come out really nice and red too or pink so yeah, the side by side between the, so the queen, uh, crimson pr queen is very, the leaves are much softer and the Suzy Q's got the crinkles, harder leaves and uh, they kind of fold up a little bit, almost like a little bit of a taco. Yeah, the, those are the first ones. Uh, and then I want to show you guys the difference because sometimes in pictures when you just see them by themselves, you see their individual photos, you don't really know the difference in their sizes. So I want to kind of show you side by side the different sizes between Hoya Matil and Hoya Serpents. So this one is a Matilde. The leaves are very succulent, very shiny and splashy. Um, and then this is the Serpent. Also really adorable round leaves, but if you can see the leaves are actually a little bit fuzzy so they're definitely quite different even though they're round leaf Hoyas in terms of sizes uh, the Matil is quite a bit bigger I would say three leaves of a serpent makes one leaf of Matil I love these two so much round leaf plants are just where it's at with me and also hard shaped leaves uh, okay next on the docket is this one people are not really asking about this one but I, I find them to be very similar so I figure um, I'll do a comparison for you uh, it's the Hoya Fichia and the Hoya Canforifolia so I'll show you the Fichia first it is known in love for its venation and when it's sun stress it turns into like it blushes beautifully so I wish it, I wish mine will do that but I'm really happy for all these new growth that's happening very similar to that one the canfori folia has whoops it's not good uh, very stunning venation in their leaves But I, I find this one, if you can see, the, the leaves are growing in kind of like clusters a little bit. 
So the venation is not as prominent in this one as the Fichia, but still pretty prominent. Um, and the leaves are not as succulent as, as the Fichia, but so they're kind of different. Uh, I will get both, which I did. <laughs> What will happen over there? The leaf that fell. That's a really nice succulent, beautiful leaf. Okay, last, last, the last one that I'm going to show you guys. It's not actually a hoya, but I figure I'll just kind of throw it out there because they are so similar, and I think they're both kind of referred to as watermelon. So, but one is a Dichetia and one is a Peperomia. So this one is the Dichetia ovata. It, it's also referred to as the watermelon, this uh, watermelon Dichetia. This one I have brought back from the brink of death, so I'm really, really happy with it. It's really loves light and really needs to be dried out. I have found so much root rot on him before. Okay, and then I'm going to show you the Peperomia angulata. Also super adorable. When I first got these two plants, I was like, I just cannot tell the difference. But, you know, it's really obvious to me. Now, the pe Peperomia angulata is thinner in the leaves. And uh, the, the, the watermelon is like a more ang um, uh, elongated watermelon rather than... Uh, uh, compared to the Dichetia one, which is a more oval watermelon shape. So side by side, I know, super similar. And also the, the green in this Peperomia one is darker. It flowers, I don't know if this one does flower, it's never flowered for me yet. Um, and uh, so it's darker. <sighs> yeah. And this one, has more veins than the other one. And I think this one gets super, super red. I saw a video from um, Brad's Greenhouse. If you guys haven't seen his video or checked out, check out his website, you must, if you're, especially if you're in Canada because he sells a lot of really awesome Hoyas. Although they're almost all the time out of stock as usual. Um, but yeah, I saw he, he has this type of Dichetia in his grow tin and they are just beet red and I love that so much. Uh, but yeah, super cute. So yeah, those are the ones that I wanted to show you guys uh, uh, comparison side to side. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please click like, subscribe, comment, say hi. Let me know what you want to want me to make videos about. I really appreciate new ideas or like video ideas and just, you know, anyways, every time you guys say hi, it really makes my day. Okay, that's all from me today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Bye!